Lyle Wagonick. And I'm Dominique Blocker. Welcome to This Month in Santa Barbara County. And though we've been on a bit of a hiatus, we're back to bring you information on the county's many programs and events. Well, in January, the Santa Barbara County Arts Commission sponsored Whose Woods These Are, local poetry that is inspired by county parks. The event featured many local poets and was organized by Santa Barbara City Poet Laureate David Starkey. Welcome everybody. I'm uh, Rita Ferry. I'm the Visual Arts Coordinator and the Curator of Collections for the County of Santa Barbara. It's a long title. <laughs> uh, some people feel that we're living in an age where the velocity of human experience is so accelerated that our capacity to sustain contemplation has been eroded. But I would like to pose that this exhibition and these poets tonight are sort of our anti-erosion treatment. <laughs> uh, I looked around, I, I, I asked um, folks to read tonight, uh, people who I knew uh, in various capacities, um, tried to get a, a range of folks, um, particularly um, looking for some younger poets in our midst, and so I am really happy to have them here this evening. This afternoon, as the newly risen spillway leaks the river back into its bed. Discontented campers crawl into their tents. Fishermen crank up their outboards, returning to the launch. Blessed with a sprinkling of water on our foreheads, we do nothing but turn skyward and violently wish it away. It could be a river, my mother's Susquehanna, where she swam as a child, diving and dappled, water confined like the blood in her heart, now trying but failing to flow. The father, tall and th tan, in drawstring trunks, watches her rise from the waves, two pieces of blue, cinched waist, span of his hands. In torrents of red and white traffic, and lights inside wash out the sliding glass doors until they're translucent black stones. I stand in the hallway, poring over this painting, delicately tracing my finger's shadow like a fine round brush. Overturned like a ladder of the sea, rungs of bulbs and netting lead the tided path. I hold my ear to a bronzed ronger and hear whales breathing, their pink mouths skyward, tender inside noises that inhale the floodgates of migration. Our next poet is uh, Barry Spax. Barry served as Santa Barbara's very first poet laureate. Uh, he's been teaching writing and literature for 55 years, mostly at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and also here at UCSB. He recently heard from a graduate student at the University of Alabama who plans to have one of his poems tattooed on her, shul on her shoulder blade. <laughs> Barry remarks that he strongly advised against it. <laughs> Which Zen sense. Words in my desk drawer, under bed, foot, chair. Others with the mercy, the good Zen sense, to shut their little mouths and disappear. We will wake from this dream of life as from a dream at night, the story fading we took so seriously there. We're on a road, call it Luminosity Road. Nancy Taliaferro formed us an image of it, light moving under arching tree trunks into infinite distance. Death teachings tell us, follow the clear light, 
for release from recurrent returning, light that leads to permanent peace, just as here it flows through Rocky Nook Park. We are assured that death is perfectly safe, a message whose meaning may elude us, yet we sense vast essence in the real, hidden in the way the daily takes place, all of it. The message seems humble in its plain speak, that luminosities at play in every atom by such light as this painting adores, we will find the beloved, even in total dark. Thank you. For more information on county arts programs, visit sbartscommission.org. Well, for most people, the Santa Barbara International Film Festival is about the glitz and the glamour, and of course, the movies but it's also about the kids. As part of their ongoing commitment to education, the Santa Barbara International Film Festival hosts a special event, Field Trip to the Movies. And this year, kids from throughout Santa Barbara County got the chance to watch Toy Story 3 and speak with the director. Field Trip to the Movies is essentially designed for fifth graders. And what we do is we bus from all over Santa Barbara County, schools, into the Arlington Theater for free, show them a film, and then introduce them to the filmmaker or some discipline of the filmmaking business. We've got Lee Unkrich, who directed Toy Story 3. So they're going to hear how Toy Story 3 was made. It is purely for the kids. You notice out here we're looking, we're standing in front of the Arlington. Right now, the screening is going on. People are just walking by, no fanfare, no Klieg lights, no red carpet, under the radar. And that's the beauty of it. It goes on behind the scenes. The festival supports it, organizes it, gets the kids here. I do my bit, and I think it changes lives. It's a wonderful behind the scenes moment that I am really, really, really happy that it occurs and happy that I'm a part of it. This is, this is very personal to me. My goal in life is to pass on anything that I have learned to somebody else. I like doing that because I see thousands of incredibly cheerful, screaming, smiling faces in front of me. And every now and then, you know you're connecting with one or a couple of these kids. You're connecting, you're making a connection. I'm gonna be a filmmaker. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And that moment is what makes it all worthwhile for me. Hay muchas cosas de hacer en el lago Cachuma. Tiendas y auto caravanas para acampar y ahora cabañas para rentar. Puedes andar en tu barco o puedes pescar. Y hay visitas guiadas del lago. Cuando visites, párese por el centro de naturaleza, la tienda general, visite el lago Cachuma. Un parque del condado de Santa Bárbara, ahí en tu traspatio, en la carretera 154, la preciosa Lago Cachuma. Last month, Tecolote Canyon accumulated 4.56 inches of rain, while Rancho San Julian on the way to Lompoc accumulated 5.33. However, the Kiama Fire Station only accumulated one third of an inch. How do I know this? I looked it up on the county's website for up to date and historical rain totals. We're just coming out of a, a significant rain event, and so a lot of people are interested in, in, in uh, rainfall values. Uh, how much did we get? How much are the creeks running? And uh, people may or may not know that the Flood Control District has all sorts of hydrologic data available of what we have received. And in fact, uh, we've got well over 100 hydrologic sites. Of those, about 84 of them are uh, automated uh, real-time uh, sensors that transmit data to a central computer here in the office. And that allows us to access real-time environmental data, which would include rainfall, stream flow, uh, weather data, uh, reservoir levels, 
And in fact, uh, in the past year or so, it was October of 2009 that we made that data uh, accessible by the public through our, our website, and we've gotten a very favorable response to that. People are able to take a look at how much rain we, we've received in the past one hour, two hours, uh, one day, two days, and it's, it, it, it allows us to monitor the rainstorms as they're going on, and, uh, and from that we can uh, look for trouble spots that, that might occur. It allows us to uh, gauge our field response, uh, what do we need to uh, respond to. Uh, it allows us to run our hydrologic models of the San Ynez River. Uh, it allows us to perhaps predict what the reservoirs are going to be doing. So it, it's all based on this alert system that, that we have. We think this is great data to not only uh, uh, look at during a storm event, but we've got archive data too that uh, serves a whole variety of uses. So to, to access the real-time data during a storm event, or any other time for that matter, it's at the county website, and that would be santabarbara.onerain.com. Now, what we've also recently published, uh, this is only out about a month now, and it's available also on the Santa Barbara County uh, website on Public Works under Water Resources. Uh, it's a hydrology report that gets into precipitation, rivers, streams, and reservoirs. There's a wealth of information in here, and uh, it's available electronically. We also have it for sale hard copy, but it's it's uh, for free online. And so th those resources are available to the public. There's a lot to do at Kachuma Lake tent and RV camping, and now cabin rentals, boating and recreational fishing, guided lake cruises, hiking trails. While you're here, stop by the Nature Center and General Store. Visit Kachuma Lake, a Santa Barbara County Park right in your backyard on Highway 154. Beautiful Kachuma Lake. This is one of the many programs that we do as a regional arts agency that represents Santa Barbara County and the city of Santa Barbara. We are one of about, I think, 35 other county groups and so on that are participating in the Poetry Out Loud contest. Santa, Santa, I know Ventura County had their contest today at three, and we have ours. I think there's some more taking place in other counties tomorrow, with all of the finalists going to the uh, reporting to the state on Monday morning. So. Um, I'm just so delighted this program has grown so much over the years. This is our fifth year of participating. Um, it actually started, we, were, we got on board in the second year as a, one of the pilot counties, and it's just been great how the community has embraced this um, contest. Uh, they'll be dividing their perception into uh, six parts uh, as best they can. Uh, they're going to be thinking about physical presence, voice and articulation, appropriateness of dramatization, level of difficulty of the poem, evidence of understanding, and then an overall performance uh, way of evaluating. Trading some ruse for a blot or two, labored to braid with transparent diction. Fiction, quick fix, quixotic fixation, as the pulse of impulses Drained through my veins, I tried to live 20 lives at once. What if there really were a you beyond me? Not just the waves off my own fire, like those waves off the backyard grill you can see the next yard through. Though not well, just enough to know that off to the right belongs to someone else, not you. What happens to our dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotting meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? You guys were so good. Uh, there's so many very, very fun. <laughs> But they had to come down to just three people, starting with number three, 
uh, Rashika Singh. Out there, something is being picked. The red and white bandanas go to my heart. A fine young man rides by on horseback. Now, the door shuts. And our second place winner is Haley Peterson. Work is what you have done after the play is produced and the audience claps. Before that, friends keep asking when you're planning to go out and get a job. Genius is what they know you had after the third volume of Remarkable Poems. Earlier, they accuse you of withdrawing. Ask why you don't have a baby. Call you a bum. And our winner for this evening is Courtney Cumberland. Dos Pueblos High School, and I'll be reciting Since There Is No Escape by Sarah Teasdale. Since there is no escape, since at the end my body will be utterly destroyed, this hand I love as I have loved a friend, this body I tended, wept with, and enjoyed, since there is no escape even for me, who love life with a love too sharp to bear. The scent of orchards in the rain, the sea, and hours alone, too still and sure for prayer. Since darkness waits for me, then all the more, let me go down as waves sweep to the shore in pride, and let me sing with my last breath. In these few hours of light, I lift my head. Life is my lover. I shall leave the dead if there is any way to baffle death. Thank you. For more information on the Poetry Out Loud recitation competitions, visit poetryoutloud.org. So what happens to your trash cans when you take them out to the street? What about the contents inside of them? Well, I'm about to show you in this video that I produced for the Resource Recovery and Waste Management Division of County Public Works. It's Thursday, which means it's time to take these bins out to the curb before going to work. And when I get home from work, like magic, will be completely empty. Although it's not magic, the content of each of these bins is taken to a different place and we're going to show you what happens when it gets there. Now this brown bin is for trash, or more accurately, municipal solid waste. When you empty your household waste, you place it into a brown bin like this. The bin is picked up by a collection service company, which takes it to a nearby landfill or to a transfer station. A landfill is the waste's final destination, and waste is taken to a transfer station is only stored temporarily until it can be transferred to a landfill. The county operates four transfer stations, the South Coast Recycling and Transfer Station in Santa Barbara, the San Ynez Recycling and Transfer Station in Los Olivos, the Nukiyama Transfer Station, and the Ventucopa Transfer Station. The county also operates the Tahegas Landfill on the Gaviota Coast. This landfill serves the unincorporated communities of Santa Barbara County on the South Coast, the San Ynez Valley, and the Kiyama Valley. It also serves the cities of Santa Barbara, Goleta, Solvang, and Buellton. As residents of Santa Barbara County, we recycle more than 70% of all the waste we generate. This is a great statistic, but that means that we still have waste that is disposed in a landfill. Modern landfills are uh, much more complicated than most people think. Today, uh, we make sure that the material is buried adequately and that no hazardous materials are disposed of within our landfills. To protect groundwater, all new landfills have to have liners. These are usually a series of carbon and plastic layers that prevent groundwater and trash from mixing. We also collect any surface water that comes in contact with the landfill, 
This collected water is tested regularly to make sure it is clean. We then reuse it on site to control dust. Another important environmental protection measure is our landfill gas collection system. When trash decomposes within landfill, it generates methane. Methane is a significant impact to the environment as a greenhouse gas. Methane is also a source of energy that we can capture and reuse. Most landfills collect this gas and burn it. We collect it through these gas collection wells, which act like a really large straw that sucks out any gases inside the landfill. The gas is then piped into this power plant where it turns into electricity. Right now, Tahegas Landfill generates three megawatts of power, which is enough to power 2,500 homes here in Santa Barbara County. Tahegas Landfill is an important and valuable asset to our community. It serves our waste and only our waste. Our community's environmental values are reflected in the way we run our landfill. This goes well beyond the green energy generated by our landfill gas system, but goes into everything we do on a daily basis. We were the first landfill in California to hire Falconeer to chase away seagulls at the landfill. Seagulls were polluting a local beach, and when fireworks, loud sounds, and dogs weren't enough to scare them away, we invoked the use of falcons. Falcons are a natural and environmentally responsible way to manage gulls from the landfill site and the surrounding beaches. Innovative and environmentally responsible solutions are first and foremost as our staff works for our community. The way we run our landfill has won a silver award in North America, and our overall management system has been recognized at the gold level. The Tegas Landfill runs out of permitted airspace in the year 2023. We as a community need to look to the future. Do we want to continue burying trash as we currently do? Or do we want to look at this as a resource and possibly pull more resources, more energy out of it? You've seen that we can do this with landfill gas. We believe we can do it more with conversion technology. If you're interested in participating in this project or learning more about it, please visit us at www.conversiontechnologystudy.com. Since landfill space is limited and there is value to the materials we place in the landfill, it is essential that we reduce the amount of waste we place in our trash cans. One way to do this is by placing our recyclables in this blue bin. What can you put in the blue bin? The most common recycled items are paper products. You can recycle paper and cardboard, including junk mail, magazines and catalogs, office paper and envelopes, books, receipts, paper bags, newspaper, cardboard boxes, and paper egg cartons. Glass bottles and jars can also be recycled. All hard plastic containers are recyclable. This includes any beverage container, as well as plastic containers for fruits and vegetables, laundry detergent, dish soap, plastic cups, buckets, pots, even toys that are all plastic. Just about any metal item is recyclable. Steel or stainless steel, aluminum and aluminum foil, copper, brass, lead, pots and pans, utensils, small car and bike parts, pipes, and tools. You can also recycle all empty cans, as long as they are completely empty. Even paint and aerosol cans are recyclable. Some items should never be put in a recycling bin, like styrofoam, plastic bags, or cups made of styrofoam or waxed paper. These wastes and others will be separated out and sent to the landfill in the next stage of recycling. Most recyclable paper, plastic, glass, and metal in our community are consolidated at a county recycling and transfer station like this one located on Calle Real near the city of Santa Barbara. County trucks take most of the community recyclables to a sorting facility. Recyclables in Santa Barbara County end up at one of two recycling centers for processing. When the load arrives, large recyclables and trash are sorted out before entering the first step of the automated process. Once the recyclables are brought to a processing center, they are divided up by category using both mechanical and manual sorting. Once the different types of recyclables are sorted, they are then bailed and shipped out to a facility that will recycle this material and turn it in to new products. The County of Santa Barbara currently recycles over 30,000 tons of material collected in residential recycling containers. This material is processed by Gold Coast Recycling in Ventura and Waste Management in Santa Maria. By recycling, you are significantly reducing your reliance on virgin materials. Fewer number of trees need to be chopped down to generate paper. Less water is used in the remanufacturing process. Significantly less energy 
is used. So there's a number of environmental benefits that you can gain by participating in the recycling program. And finally, we get to our green bin, which is used for green waste. Green waste is biodegradable waste made up of grass, dry leaves, twigs, branches, flower cuttings, and hedge trimmings. Even these materials can be recycled locally. The materials that are in your green waste container are actually an excellent source for making mulch. At the facility, green waste is cleaned of trash and then ground. After grinding, the mulch is made available to the public for free pickup at the South Coast Recycling and Transfer Station. Large shipments of mulch are also available for a small delivery fee. Local avocado and citrus ranches, as well as botanical gardens such as Lotus Land, use county mulch for their operations. County green waste is collected, mulched, and sent back to the community in less than one week. Avocado orchards know the benefits of mulching, and mulch is a great addition to most gardens. Applied thickly enough, it keeps water in the soil, keeps soil from getting too hot or too cold, and reduces weed growth. Mulch can also be used to line paths and stop erosion on slopes. As green waste mulch slowly decomposes, it provides valuable carbon and nutrients to your plant's roots. Green waste recycling is the unsung hero of the recycling movement. Locally, each year 85,000 tons of material is kept from being buried by green waste recycling. On top of that, the local mulch is used in our community's gardens and agriculture, and it benefits our local community. 20 years ago, all home-generated waste was placed in the same bin and hauled off once or twice a week. As community values and state laws changed, Santa Barbara County established a program to separate the waste into three separate streams. In 2009, unincorporated residents of Santa Barbara County achieved a 73% diversion rate. This means that over two-thirds of all waste generated was diverted from county landfills into reduction, reuse, recycling, and mulching. And this number isn't magic. It's because Santa Barbara County residents did their part to ensure that the waste they created was separated into the appropriate bins for burial, recycling, and green waste. The three bin system handles much of our waste locally, but there are many other county programs for hazardous waste, medicines, and electronics. For more information on these and other county recycling programs, visit lessismore.org. For more information on county public works programs, visit countyofsb.org forward slash PWD. Well, that does it for our episode of This Month in Santa Barbara County. If you have any questions or comments, give us a call at County Television at 568-3420. Thanks for watching CSB TV Channel 20, your channel for county news and information.